This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to inthemoneystocks.com. Welcome. You are listening to Daily Market Wisdom with Master Trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz, and today is April 23rd, 2020. This is show number 19. Well, almost to 20 shows, Nick. The uh, definition of a successful podcast is one that makes it past 10. So we're a success. We're getting thousands of people listening every week, which is a great thing. And just in time, too. So we're looking... We got our weekly jobless claims, bad number. Yeah, bad number to say the least, 4.42 million uh, jobless claims again. Uh, but the market already expected this. And, you know, when, when, when you see numbers like this that are so terrible and it makes, you know, the headline in the newspaper and it'll be on the evening news tonight and it's just more negativity. But the market looks past this kind of stuff. And so people will say to me, how could the market go up today? and be up 350 points right now on the Dow Jones when the jobless claims were terrible. And the reality of it is the market is always looking forward. It doesn't look in the rearview mirror. The same way we declined from the February top all the way to the March low is the same thing. The market's already told you that this was going to happen. That's exactly what it was telling you when it was declining. And now we're here and the markets are holding up very, very well and hanging in there right now and actually going higher almost, you know, continuously. So um, the market is always forward looking. And if the economy starts to open up, you just understand that the, these jobless claims numbers will drop dramatically. They'll drop very, very quickly. And um, the key is just to get the economy going again. And that's what the stock market is telling us right now, that it will get going. Yeah. And it's important to understand that these weren't people who are laid off or fired. For the most part, they've been furloughed. Yes, there will be companies that don't hire their people back. Uh, my son works for a company, a global uh, job search company, uh, internet search boards and stuff. One of their competitors laid off 40% of the employees, but they were going down before. So the companies that were going down before probably aren't going to see much of a recovery. But on the other hand, his company is healthier than ever. They've been planning for a recession for two years. So they're ready to resume whenever the economy opens. And we got four more states opening, right? Yeah, we do. And that's that's a big positive. And if these states open up and things go well, you could bet your bottom dollar that you're going to have almost every state right on their coattails doing the same exact thing. Yeah, I mean, here in Florida... Uh, we're still going under DeSantis's executive order, which expires on May 1st. And maybe he, he won't even bother to issue any uh, limitations or renewal. A lot of it depends on Georgia because they've you can even get a tattoo there again. You can get your hair cut, get your nails done. You can get fully groomed, get a massage. I mean, you'll, you'll be a new person if you're in Georgia. I'm thinking of going and taking a visit just to get the heck out of here where everything is still shut down. Well, the great state of Georgia, it's a beautiful place. And um, again, um, you know, I, I really want to see a successful uh, opening and, and I really hope things go well there. And, and, and right now, um, it seems like things things could be, you know, ready to, you know, set to go and and go well. So, you know, let's see how it plays out. And um, again, I think other Q states will take their cue um, from really from Georgia. I believe also Tennessee and South Carolina are are set to open as well. All right. So uh, oil, we see uh, our USA trade is not doing very well. It's rallied a bit, but it's still extremely weak, huh? Yeah, USO is still a dog with fleas right now. Um, today, it's having a really good day, up about 31 cents, and that's a, about a 12.5% gain. But yesterday, it didn't really uh, act well. But we do have spot crude today, and that's the, ju the June contract trading up by nearly four dollars, and that's at seventeen seventy-five. So uh, again, pretty good move or rebound for crude since that early, uh, or I should say, since the uh, May contract uh, expired, and we had that negative print. Uh, first time I've ever seen that in my life. 
think yeah. that might be the first time it's ever happened. Agreed. And, um, you know, you've had a good rebound. But again, like the way I told everybody, if you want to nibble on this, you want to get involved in this play, go out with call options. Give yourself out till October. Don't, you know, go short term. One thing I've noticed with a lot of uh, beginning beginner traders, they'll go out and they'll try to play the near term expiration. That's crazy. You've got to give yourself time on the clock, especially when there's been zero demand for any petroleum products, including airlines. And, uh, you know, you can look at really across the board at your own gasoline tank and, and there's no cars that are really filling up very often. So, um, you know, if you get the economy open, this all, all these problems get resolved rather quickly. Hey, and we've got the uh, second stimulus. I think, uh, I don't know if the House has met yet or they're going to meet today to pass it, which means that Trump is going to sign it. Another $300 billion for small businesses, so that should help another million or so. And hopefully now the system's known, it can, the money can go out a lot quicker than it did last time where nobody knew what was going on. Yeah, I, I still have to say I, they've done the programs pretty quickly. Um, the passages of the bills, not so quick. But, uh, you know, the Treasury and the way they've gotten money out to people, in my opinion, has been pretty dramatic. So uh, they've done it in quick fashion. Um, and, you know, again, I, I'm not going to say it's right or it's wrong or where we are. Believe me, a lot of people, um, you know, need that money. So that that's, you know, I, I guess in this situation, it's a good thing to happen. Um, but they've learned a lot from, you know, how to get money out to people. And again, it's not an easy process, but they've done it really quickly. They've expedited the process. And this second passage should should go smooth. Yeah, certainly more smoother than the first one. And and the uh, so we're at the second round. And I don't know if it's going to help or not, but it's certainly going to help the businesses who actually get it. And hopefully all of the uh, all of the preferential people in the first round, I mean, there was like uh, hundreds of publicly traded companies that were qualified. Yeah, and and you, for you saw Shake Shack, they gave yeah. back $10, $10 million. I, I don't think they did it out of the kindness of their heart. They probably, you know, saw the press behind it and said, Hey, we don't need this and we're going to, we're going to give it back. But, you know, to that, to that stock's credit, and that's a stock I trade quite often. Um, you know, it, it, it's hung in there really well and it's actually gone higher and it looks like it wants to go higher from here. So, um, again, um, these publicly traded companies, these endowments or, or, or any, any of these people that are able to take money and don't need it should really give it back. That's yes. the right thing to do. You'll have good karma going forward. And, um, again, you know, we'll, we'll see how this one plays out, but I, I believe this is more geared towards the, uh, the, the small, you know, the small business that is not publicly traded, can't raise capital in the open markets. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, exactly, and uh, can't get any loans from banks because, as we know, J.P. Morgan isn't uh, doing any any uh, loans to small businesses anymore, except what is uh, guaranteed by the U.S. government, and I guess that's going to continue for a while. I just wonder where real estate's going to wind up in this equation, and what are the what are the REIT stocks saying? Do you think? Well, I mean, ev everything's been depressed. Um... Uh, right now, I haven't really been um, looking at uh, any any REITs because they're so different in structure. So I haven't really looked at any of them in particular. But when I look at the IYR, which is um, the iShares Commercial Real Estate ETF, that's um, you know basically like Vernado and and yeah. big companies like that. The chart actually looks pretty decent. So you know you wouldn't think that would be the case, but they put their lows in on IYR on the 23rd of March. It made a higher low on uh, April 3rd, and now, you know, you're really just pulling back off the recent high from April 9th, but it's a gradual sideways pullback, and that's a bullish pattern to go up. So um, I, I have to say the, the, the uh, REITs probably look pretty decent, but I haven't looked at all of them. They all have different structures. But if you look at the IYR, that, that's a pretty good daily chart pattern to go higher yeah. from here, and it's at $73. I could see this going, you know, uh, 80, 85 pretty easily. Huh. All right. So let's go back to our hotel stocks there, Hyatt, Hilton, Marriott. Uh, where are we at with them? So those chart patterns are still really, really solid. And, um, I, you know, I was looking today at Choice Hotels. I was actually looking last night. And that pattern looks solid. That stock's up big today. It's up about, about four, a little over 4%. 
Um, but they all look really good. The thing that you have to remember, though, they're going to all report earnings uh, later this month, early May. So first week of May, I believe Hilton and Hyatt report earnings. I believe Choice Hotels, which is ticker symbol CHH, they report, I think, on April 30th. You have to check those dates, but I believe that's the time period. Um, so once those earnings are behind us, I think it's time to go in. But you never know what can happen after an earnings announcement. So sometimes the stock can go down. I don't like to trade in front of earnings announcements. Um, I always think that's a gambler's game. As a trader, I usually step aside, wait for the announcement to end, and then I get back involved in the name. So I'm going to be waiting for those earnings to pass, and then I will be looking to get into those names. All right. So, so trader's rule of thumb is uh, when earnings announcements are coming out, get out of the way, wait till afterwards, huh? Yeah, that's that's my rule. Um, a lot of people don't do that, but you could wake up in the morning and you know you could be down 25, 30 percent. I don't like that feeling. Um, sometimes on the other flip side, you could be up 25, 30 percent. Some of these things are are big, big movers, but the reality of it is. Um, you just don't know what you're going to get. And as a trader, the, the, the reason why we trade or the reason why I trade is because I have the odds in my favor. Whether I'm right or wrong, I always have the odds in my favor. If I'm wrong, something happened and, and it's a mishap. But I could successfully I – could, I could truthfully say I bat 80 percent. And that's, that's good enough to make a, a pretty nice lifestyle for yourself. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, that's an interesting thing because a lot of people uh, buy, you know – buy on the rumor and sell on the news, right? Yeah, and... well, that goes on, and, and I'll do that too. Um, a lot of times, you know, if I'm running, you know, we have an equity that's on the move and I'm in it, I'll, I'll trade it up into some important announcement. But very, very often, if you're up into a major announcement, you do want to get out because it will be buy the rumor, sell the news. Yeah, so that's a pretty good rule of thumb, huh? Oh, it's it's an old market adage, and, and the, the, the old market adages uh, that, that have been around forever – they, they hold true today just as much as they, they were true 50 years ago. Yeah, that old saying, I remember, when the shoeshine boy and the elevator operator are giving you stock tips, it's time to get out. Yes, and, and uh, we saw that really in January. <laughs> so, yes. I mean, in January, you know, everybody had an opinion about the stock market. Everybody loved uh, galactic space and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Tesla at 900 and, you know— um, you see where things went. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. So, I mean, the travel stocks to me are like the best leading indicator because right now I talk to people who I know. I say, uh, uh, no, nobody's going to go on a vacation. Nobody's going to go on an airplane, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just not buying it, you know? Well, I'm not buying it either, and, and I'll give you a good example why I'm not, is because if you just looked out, out at Jacksonville, Florida, and this, this was national news, just look at the turnout when they reopened their beaches. And they did that with, with distancing, and they did that with, with all these rules in place. They only kept the beach open for a certain amount of hours, from what I understand, and they reopened it a little bit later. And, and those beaches, people really came out. So people are ready to get out. My wife has already booked a couple hotels. She's already bought plane tickets for some trips. And um, if we're doing it, and I know you're doing it, yeah, I have absolutely. to think others are doing it. I would think. Uh, it, look, um, the frequent flyer pro programs for these airlines are getting more and more like miles required to take short trips. Now, I looked at American Airlines, and I can go round trip to any place in the U.S. first class for 40,000 miles. And it hasn't been like that in about two, two and a half years. It was yeah. very hard to catch those kind of fares. And I'm saying, hey, you know, I, I was going to go out west anyway. I'm figuring the end of May, beginning of June, probably be the best time to do it and take my chances, you know? Well, I, I don't think you're really taking a chance. I think that, um, you know, as long as you, uh, go into that. And, and these airlines, they're going to need to do some protective measures, whether it's cleaning the planes at night, which I think they should do probably anyway. a better job of, yeah. or maybe even use that five minute Abbott lab test and test everybody before they get on the aircraft. What's so hard about that? It's five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess the, the, I don't know that they have enough of them, but certainly easy enough. Hey, if they could test people for drugs for methamphetamine at a traffic stop, 
then they certainly can track people's COVID-19, test them for COVID-19 at an airport. It shouldn't be that difficult. My wife was just telling me today in uh, a a town in Connecticut, because she's from Connecticut, and uh, a town in Connecticut, I can't recall which, uh, they're using drones that will test your temperature on all the people that are out and about. And I said, really? And she said, yeah, and they're also, the drones are also picking up if you even cough. So uh, that's pretty incredible that Big Brother can do all of that, but we can't come up with, we can't use these five minute tests to get into an airplane. Come on, it's getting ridiculous. It yeah. sounds political, mm-hmm. and um, you know there are measures now. We have a lot of technology in place to get this economy underway. Let's stop messing around and start opening up. And I got a question for you. So about the charts and politics, how do you uh, can you see political movements in the charts? Uh, what's happening in po- in politics uh, as it affects the markets? Uh, you know how do this, how do they reflect that? Yeah. So going back. Um, to really as long as I've been in this business, if the economy is doing well, meaning the stock market's doing well, mm-hmm. the incumbent president usually will win. It's, 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 I, I don't really remember when that was not the case. Um, so the, 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 the whole theory of if you want to defeat a president, take down the stock market and you can defeat him. And that's, that's holding true this year as well. Yeah. So overall, when you really look at the market, so it, it took back half of its losses. The Nasdaq even more so. How much of the Nasdaq retraced its losses? And the Nasdaq is almost back to flat for the year. Yeah. So uh, you know, it, it it retraced about seventy percent of its of its declines. Yeah. So Nasdaq is flat. The Dow is down, what fifteen twenty percent, if memory serves me correct. It's down about six thousand points. So, right, and uh, the S and P. Also yeah, down. so if you yeah. just look at all of the um, percentages for the year, and I, I always put them up for my members each and every night just so that they have an idea. We have the NASDAQ um, down 5% for the year, um, and, and right now it's up another you know 1% today. Uh, the S&P is down about 13% for the year, but that's now up about 1.3% today. The Dow is down 17% percent for the year now, but that was down over 30 percent. And the Russell 2000, which does represent small cap companies in the United States, is down about 27 percent for the year. But that's up over 2 percent today, leading the markets higher. So that that's a positive sign, at least right now. If the Russell starts to show leadership, um, that means you're getting small business recovery in the U.S. Right. Yeah, because that's the much broader indice of smaller companies, obviously. So, so I guess we just have to sit back. Oh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention gold and silver. Had a pretty uh, great day yesterday, and uh, is doing pretty well today as well. I mean, it's up twenty one dollars on the spot. Gold and silver's up uh, over a percent and a half, almost a percent and a half for today. Yeah, and uh, that SLV trade is looking good. Yeah, it's looking good. We're up nicely on that position, and um, again, letting it run. That's that's really it. It should go higher. SLV, remember, has industrial properties as well. So mm-hmm. if you start to see the economy pick up, that should even do better and start to even show some leadership because it is always trails gold and silver. I mean, it always trails gold. Silver is always the the yeah. laggard, mm-hmm. but you start to get some industrial. You know, just think about this. If we had um, uh, another, which which most likely, I doubt it would get passed, but if, if you got the infrastructure bill going, or you got mm-hmm. chatter of, ch- just chatter of it, that it has a shot of getting passed, right. I mean, silver would definitely benefit from that tremendously. Yes, agreed. And it'll be interesting to see if they can get their acts together to do it. Uh you know, these are uh, extraordinary times, so maybe they will get their act together, and maybe we're we're going to be surprised by it, right? You never know. Um, I think it's stranger things probably have not happened. Yeah. <laughs> this, you know, I'd like to say stranger things have happened, but I'm not so sure. The, you know, the political tug of war that goes on is, is unlike anything I've ever seen in my lifetime. Now, uh, I'm just 50 years old, so uh, what do I know? But 
I, I don't think I've ever witnessed this. And I, I've, you know, I've, I've followed politics pretty closely my whole life, but I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, same here. Never, ever uh, on so many different levels from the impeachment uh, to the outsider president to the repudiation of the status quo and the elites. All of these things are happening and they're happening very quickly. And uh, to the so-called uh, political experts there, uh, of course, they're always surprised when these types of things do happen, but really shouldn't be. Anyways, that's it for today. So you got to go over to inthemoneystocks.com, check out Nick's site, check out his up-to-the-date, up-to-date, up-to-the-minute record, his trading record, and a lot of info on there, good good educational info that you should check out, inthemoneystocks.com. And the Twitter feed is ITMS. And hey, our, you want to write us an email? We'd love to hear from you. Give us your opinion of the markets. It's kl at kerrylutz.com. Twitter feed at Kerry Lutz. Facebook page, Financial Survival Network. And Nick, we will, uh, we'll talk to you. We'll check back tomorrow and see what happened. Thank you, Kerry. This, this is, is your, your dose, dose of daily, daily market, market wisdom, wisdom with master, master trader, trader Nick, Nick Santiago. Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com.